All right, thank you for staying with us. It's time for us to move on very quickly to uh, this part of uh, sports tonight. And we will talk uh, Euro 2016 uh, on the show uh, tonight. Um, before I bring in uh, Onye, let, let's see if we can just update you with the results. Um, three games uh, have been played. Uh, have been played. Uh, two already decided. The third one is going on. And um, Onye, maybe we should start with the last result there because it's a live game currently going on. The host, France, are taking on Albania. And uh, reading a lot of people talk about this game before it started, um, they were predicting that France will score as many as four or five goals. Uh, in the game, but uh, as we speak, Oye, um, it's still goalless in that one, and uh, we have played about 84 minutes of football. Must be a very difficult game for the French. The, the tournament has been quite difficult for all the teams, Tony. Um, you know, even the Paris Saint-Germain favourites mm. have struggled. Uh, France won their first game against Romania 2-1. Um, in that game, they, they, they struggled too. Um, but I think Paye Dimitri you know, have been quite, you know, inspirational for mm, them. Mm. Uh, I've been following this game before we, we came on air. Um, he, he, he has been on top of his game. Um, there are no easy games again. France have to, you know, show that uh, they are also, you know, full of stars. And the stars must also show that uh, they are capable of winning the games. I read um, an interview credited to mm. um, Patrice Evra, you know, yesterday, mm. where he said the difference between this team and the turbulent you know, teams in the past is that the team is not the star. That all the players... No, no big name. No big name, no factions. One. And he, he hopes that uh, this team can go as far as possible. Uh, so so they, mm. they have to show it on the pitch. They have the players, good players, decent ones, a mixture of some old players and new players who are doing well. Maturity in the middle of the park. Uh, Paye, you know, you know, just trying to string, Hero, creating the, the, the passes Mike for Anthony Marshall. And, and Marshall. You know, so so if, if they are able to gel, then they can go far in the tournament. Mm. Against Albania, they have to show that yeah, um, it, you know, they are a good side. Mm. All right, the, the game is, is, is um, still going on, and uh, the French are trying. They've been frustrated uh, by Albania. The game still goalless after 85 minutes. Uh, earlier on today, Russia lost 1-2 uh, uh, to Slovakia. And of course, uh, Romania uh, were forced to a one all draw by Switzerland. And uh, I think it's just confirmation of the fact that this tournament is one very unpredictable tournament. The teams are so equally matched. And we've seen some relatively unknown teams, um, all the more established ones, um, to stalemate. So it, it, it's, it's anybody's call, this um, Euro um, 2016. But we'll keep monitoring that game uh, in the dying minutes now and we'll update you once there's any change uh, around the scoreline. Let's talk about yesterday, when you, when you talked about the weaker teams and how they're holding the more established ones uh, uh, to show that football is different, football has changed now. Um, and the one that comes to mind is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal and Iceland. And a lot of people have made jokes about it, that Iceland is a little island and uh, maybe only Cristiano Ronaldo alone could have taken them out, uh, but it was not to be. Nani. Nani yeah. scored yeah. early in the game, yeah. and we thought there was going to be plenty of goals. Yeah. Uh, and that Portugal will, they will, will take them to, to the cleaners. But uh, not to be, they came back, drill level, and uh, forced uh, Portugal to... Uh, it was a frustrating night for the Portuguese yeah, and very for Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, very frustrating, Tony. I think um, Ronaldo was not in his right element. He missed uh, two chances in the first half, and, you know, Portugal will rule... And that guy, yes, we rule, Yeah, he will rule uh, the chances they missed against Iceland. You know, like you said, no team is uh, an underdog in this tournament. Every team have proved. We just saw Slovakia, you know, taking out Russia. Mm. And, the, you know, the, 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 the performance of, Hungary, of, of one Putin, man, yeah. Austria, Tunis. Hamsik, who did so well with Napoli. Yeah. You know, very, very instrumental for Slovakia. You know, they, they have, all the teams have some, you know, decent players in European clubs. You know, they have brought in that experience, their performance, replicating it. For, for their countries in the you know, 2016. Mm. Um, I just hope that uh, a, a new uh, winner will match. Uh, but from the way it's going, the Italians are still very strong to him. Mm. You know, the Germans anything are still coming up. Anything, anything can happen in early days. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Still talking about the game that you are watching on your screen, the uh, picture that you're seeing, that's uh, uh, Baki Janasin uh, cancelling out Nani's um, goal uh, to give Iceland a share of the spoils. And... Uh, they were playing their second game against Hungary. Uh, but in case you've forgotten, remember, 
um, a starting Swede um, that was in charge of the Super Eagles for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. His name, Lars Lagerbach. That's the man. That's the man. Oh, yeah. Still looking exactly the way he looked when he was here uh, about six years ago. He's yeah. the man in charge of Iceland yeah. and he's been speaking. Um, let's listen to Lars Lagerbach and uh, we'll come back. Still a little time for us to talk uh, Oscar Pistorius on sports tonight. The goal, if you call it a goal, you, we always try to win every game. And we always wanted to, of course, go on from the, from the group stage. And uh, nothing has changed about that. So I still think we have about the same realistic chance to go on. But of course, one point against the big favorite in the group is a good start for us. It was absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, they are debutants like we are in the finals and the way they behave and they supported us, it was totally, totally great. But I think he was disappointed. Maybe he was a little bit jealous on us that we took one point from them. So, uh, I mean, when people are disappointed, I don't think you should make take so much that in consideration because uh, if they don't do anything really ugly and if he just walked off not uh, shaking the hand or if he say some words in, in disappointment, I, I don't mind that. For me it's more important that everybody is doing a professional job out on the pitch. Uh, that's uh, Lars Lagerbach, uh, co-manager of Iceland, um, talking about uh, uh, Euro 2016 and the in amazing result, good, very good result that he got against the Portuguese in their first game. Um, only before we wrap it up, we have about two minutes or three minutes to wrap up the show tonight. So let's uh, just um, spend the rest of the time to uh, take you to South Africa. We just talked about South Africa 2010 and the man that led us there, last Lagerbach. But this time we're going to South Africa for something different. Oscar Pistorius is back in the news. And um, maybe we'll just pause a little bit, allow you to uh, hear a little bit of the drama that happened in court in South Africa in Pretoria earlier today. Who else other than an intruder would have entered the house at 3 o'clock? In your mind, when you hear that noise in the bathroom and you believe that it's not the deceased, who else would enter 3 o'clock? Someone coming to clean the house? Someone coming to buy the house? Or who? We know where we live. We're fearful. You would, a logic thought process would be an intruder. There is no purpose served in rehabilitating one who has already been successfully rehabilitated. The accused would not have been released on correctional supervision if he posed a danger to society and was not rehabilitated. And it's in fact clear in the reports. The accused has paid from the minute he fired the shots and will pay for this for the rest of his life. It's not going away. He lost his future with his chosen loved one. He has paid physically, losing his health. He has paid emotionally. We say he's a shell of the man that he was. We know in the evidence, not only by Professor calls, but also the pastor. And he was, the pastor was never challenged on that. He's a broken man. It's now up to the accused to take this court into his, into his confidence and to explain to this court. He hasn't done so. Already. He hasn't done so. But the court knows that he has given a version television interview explaining himself, talking about that night. It does not matter if the accused thought she was an intruder. Is the intruder's life not important? In his view on the argument of the defense, intentionally killed an intruder. That's not important. As long as we can just cover in our argument that he never thought he was killing Riva, then we're happy. What happened is the consequence of his actions, the consequence of his intention is that the deceased lost the most valuable asset she ever had, the life. She can never walk in court, my lady. We feel that a, a long-term imprisonment and the minimum sentence should be imposed. All right, so plenty of drama today, earlier on uh, in uh, Pretoria. Um, only before I get your, your reaction um, to, to that, as we wrap up the show, let's quickly take you back to Euro 2016, back to France, and uh, tell you that uh, there's been a change, uh, a late, late goal has come in, and uh, guess what? It's gone to the French. So that game is 1-0 now, 90th minute goal uh, for France, and uh, only that changes the entire complexion. France battled, 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 and battled on 
and eventually they got a goal in the 90th minute. Yeah, persistence counts. You know, um, when you are playing against a team that um, wants to frustrate the opponent, so it's very, very difficult. You have to be persistent, look for options, be creative, get around them. When you get the goals, then you have three points. They are six points and should be on, on top of that group. So I think for France, the hosting, they are, they are, they are on, on track. Mm. All right, Oscar Pistorius uh, and, and the stories uh, today. So much drama, Tony. Mm. I saw the state pros prosecutor, you know, trying to counter what Os Oscar Pistorius did. You know, you know what he said, that mm. the, the disease cannot work because Oscar Pistorius worked on his, um, you know, in his, his thumbs, you know, trying to show how vulnerable you know, that was what the lawyer told him, trying to show how vulnerable he, he, could, be he could be without his protection. Without his, that was why he shot at, you know, without knowing that um, his, his girlfriend was, mm. you know, around on Valentine's Day. So a lot of drama to him. And the, the, I think the least he could get is uh, 15 years. The third day of, um, you know, uh, testimony and arguments ended today. And it's likely to be sentenced on July, um, July the 16th. Mm. So we'll see mm. what happens. But as for us, perpetrators and uh, people in the court today, it was full of emotion, mm. you know, from both sides. Mm. All right, so that's the picture once again of uh, Oscar Pistorius in Pretoria, and uh, we'll see how this case uh, unfolds. Well, uh, France's uh, goal was scored by Antoine Grinsman in the 19th minute, and I think that's just good enough for uh, the French to go home with three points against uh, Albania. That's how we also have to wrap it up on Sports Tonight this midweek. Thank you for watching. There's still more for you tomorrow. Join us then. Bye-bye now.